Previously on the capture of the Green River Killer. I'll find your granddaughter's killer, I promise. Hi, my name's Helen. Cool. I make love to women. <laughs> Let me see you are. <laughs> they look so good. <laughs> what are you doing? You're what you're looking for is a white male, yeah. most likely a smoker yeah. and a drinker, somewhere yeah. between his late 20s, early 40s. He doesn't seem like a killer, so they trust him. You ever been in a movie? I make movies. I'd like you to be in my newest movie. He's screwing me, Mom. More than he's screwing you. I know who the Green River Killer is. Call me Bowie. You know who he is, don't you? Uh-uh. He invented the knife. This is a good spot. We gonna build it here. Your mom was right, you know. What about? About William. There's people around here that like to kill little boys like you. to know what it felt like. How much control do we have over our lives? That's what it comes down to. He's cute. Is he yours? Yeah. Of the choices we make, how many are choices? Bet I know who this is. is your little boy. Still am. Come on inside. Let's just do it in here. No, no, no. Come on.
Five years is just too long. You need a break, Dave. God knows we all do, but you more than anyone. So you're absolutely right, Faye, and thank you for your concern. She could talk. For five minutes, she could come back and answer our questions. Which would be what? What other than who done it? Why did you go out with this guy? How did he win your trust? How did it happen? How did God let it happen? When did George X kill himself? February of 86. This receipt is from April of 86. Which means Joe Jakes is not our guy. The guy's still working. She's talking to you, Dave. How about we start with a comparison list of all the Johns arrested for solicitation, prostitution, with all the pickup truck owners? I'm on it. I'm not. Hell's friend. Yeah, I remember. I haven't seen you in a while. What's up? Um, I finished my GED. I'm doing nails downtown at the market. Ah, I'm getting married in the spring. Yeah, good for you. I was wondering, have you seen Hell? She was working the strip last I heard. Maybe you want to check down there. She ever call she got her own life now okay thanks if you hear from her we just tell her that i asked about her I've gone through these old files. There's someone I'd like to investigate further. His name's Gary Ridgway. He turned up on both the lists I requested. Owns a pickup truck. Was arrested on John Patrol in May of 1982. Admits he dates prostitutes. Admits he knew some of the women who were killed. Forget it, Dave. We know it was Joe Jakes. We don't know that. He killed himself. The murder stopped. Well, what if they haven't? <sighs> the last body we found died after Jakes killed himself. I just, I still don't think we can stop until we have proof. And I don't think the newspapers would want it any differently. Ridgeway, why is this name familiar? We talked to him in 83. He passed a polygraph in 84. He passed. Which we know from Jeb Dallas, we can't always trust. Look, I just, I just think we should take another look at this guy. What do you need? Search his house, search his pickup truck, search his locker at work, get samples of hair and saliva, and put him under surveillance. Okay. You better be right.
Hey, 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 hey. What's going on here? What's the trouble? What's going on? This is my What's truck. What's the trouble, Mr. Ridgeway? Hey. I have a warrant to search your truck. King County Police. Say that again. We found nothing. Nothing to connect him with any of these crimes? No. Nothing in his house? Nothing at work? No. Do you know what this makes us look like? In front of his co-workers and neighbors, that man was humiliated. We can't afford another lawsuit, and we may have one. He's hired a lawyer. Just, we... I thought we were getting close. I'll tell you how close we are. The Seattle Times got wind of this. I got a call from a reporter this morning. It was all I could do to beg him to keep that man's name out of the paper. They're running a six-part series about the Green River murders and about how we, as a task force and a police department, have totally failed. We're close, Detective Reichert, to becoming the punchline to any number of unfunny jokes. I ain't followed your gut, okay. Every detective on this task force has his own gut feelings about who's behind this. Let me tell you what my gut says. And my gut is backed by evidence. Nothing you have shown me so far connects the last body found to the Green River Killer. There are prostitute murders down in San Diego. Maybe he's there. There are prostitute murders in Vancouver. He could be up there. But there have been no women killed for over three years in the Seattle-Tacoma area that fit his M.O., and there have been no women reported missing that fit his victim profile. Maybe he changed his M.O.? Then prove it, Riker, or move on. If your mother says you can't go, you can't go. But it's important. Look, Angela, I don't remember talking. I remember Mom. talking about it. Daniel, I need to help. You know, you don't know anything. You're never even here. Of course Daniel, I'm here. turn down that no, music. Yeah, honey, I'm home every night. Really? Late. You're always late. I'm, I'm not. Okay, look. You, okay, sometimes I'm You're old enough to know what's going on. You're old enough to know what's going on. You know what I'm doing. Andrew, I'm doing the best I can. Did you apologize to Angela? Not yet. We miss you, Dave. I'm here. No, no, you're not. Even when you're here, you're not here. They're counting on me. Who? The guys at work? The dead girls. And their families. Families who don't know where their daughters are. They don't know if they're alive. You know, if anything were to happen to Angela, I'd...
We'll do a two hour live program with a call in line so people can call in with their tips. We'll offer a reward of $100,000 to anything that leads to a conviction. We'll have a celebrity host. We'll reenact some of the crimes. Why will this we, make a difference? Because it works. I've talked to these producers. They've already sold over 200,000 felonies worldwide. 200,000. <laughs> when in doubt, turn to Hollywood. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Whatever it takes, because somewhere out there, there is someone who knows who this killer is who is afraid to come talk to you. Now, whether it's the money that's going to make a difference, whether it's some kind of publicity, whether it's a matter of dumb luck, I don't care. Because we are going to find this guy, or I swear to God. Let's get on it. Let's go. I have been working on this case for over six years now, and I feel confident that soon someone will lead us to you. And when that happens, when we get that information, no one will care about you or your problems. They will only want to see you punished. Many investigators believe that you are enjoying these killings, but several of us believe that you, you're haunted by them, that this is a nightmare for you. This whole experience has been a nightmare for you, and that you would like this nightmare to stop. But it won't stop. And that is why you must contact us. And you must contact us before someone calls us and leads us to you. Because if we identify you first, no one will care what you think or feel. It will be too late. So please call me, because it's time for us to talk. Honey? Honey, is something wrong? It's freezing out here. You should be in bed. I'm thinking about Dad. What about him? He's awfully brave. Yes, he is. But I'm not, Mom. I don't want the killer to come get us. Come here. Oh, I love you. It's OK. Yeah, OK, come on. Oh, you're freezing. Oh, I'll get you inside. Yeah, I'm looking for the home phone of a David Reichert. Hello? Hello? Jed Dallas in our sights for two and a half years. Why don't we just pick him up? What are we going to pick him up on? Oh, come on. What evidence are you going to pick him up on? Gentlemen, ladies, we got 17,000 pages of tip sheets to review. Hello? This whole manhunt thing is bull. It's never going to work. You're an idiot, Dave. You're incompetent. Hey, you're out of line, Detective. Take a walk, Dave. Detective Brooks, get him out of here now. Just calm down, all right? Get back to work, okay? Yeah. I'd like to report a missing person. She's not a relative? She's a friend. Her mother's alive, but they aren't speaking. She's been gone since the spring of 87. It's over a year and a half. Why did you wait this long to report her? We weren't speaking either. She, um... She was a prostitute. I think she was a victim of the Green River Killer. The Green River Killer gets blamed for everything around here. She hasn't moved someplace else? Those girls move around. I don't know. Maybe. Look, she's probably still out there. She'll turn up. In the meantime, we'll see what we can do. I never thought about the dead being just as lost as I was. Not in heaven or hell, but in a different place, where all they do is try to figure stuff out. Life and death, the reasons why. 
But now I know. Because now, I'm one of them. Got a few calls that might lead somewhere. That's a start. I did speak to one girl that knew more than what we released. It's not bad from 7,600 calls in two hours. Out of 80,000 attempts, we were understaffed. You really want to track down 80,000 tips? All it takes is one. I'll track that one. You do the rest. <laughs> Will do. Good night. Night. Maybe tell them he's a cop. What's this? This is a guy named Everett Holloway. We got a tip on him from the Manhunt broadcast. I was going over the Green River letter last night. I was trying to figure out what information was accurate, what was misinformation. I came across the line, out-of-state cop. Something about out-of-state. Anyway, I checked the Manhunt tip sheets. It turns out we did get a call from this lady down in Oregon who said this guy dresses a cop, took her down in his basement, and made dirty movies of her. Please! She said his name was Holloway, so I looked him up. This guy was an MP in the military, got a doctorate in psychology, and in 1979, he broke into a uniform shop and stole some police paraphernalia. Two years later, he walked off a prison work program and disappeared. That was right before the murders began. He currently lives outside of Portland, close to where Denise Bush's skull was found. So anyway, she IDs him from the mugshot, and she says all this guy wants to talk about is how much he hates prostitutes. Get this, how the Green River Killer kills all his victims in snuff films. Dave, I love you. You know that? I don't think it's possible for people to love each other anymore. I do. I want to do 
Whatever it is you want me to do. What do you want to do? What's your fantasy? You want to tie me up? You can do that. You want to do something terrible to me? Something that just might get you in... Go on, Hill. Don't stop now. How do you want to make me happy? I don't... I... I want to make me happy. But I don't know how. Have you ever seen that cartoon, Alice in Wonderland? Well, I feel like I've fallen in that hole. And no matter how hard I try, I can't get out. And I do try. I try really hard. But the thing is, I don't believe anymore. I don't believe that there is anything better than this. I don't believe that there is anyone who loves me or wants to help me. Not even God. I think God hates me. And I don't know why. Please let me go. Please just let me go. I don't want to be in here. Please just let me go. How old were the tapes? How'd you get those women to do that? Let's back up, shall we? You pose as a police officer. Then what? They came with their own free will. Why are they tied up? The bonds were loose. Why were some crying? They're faking it. How many died? None. None died? None died. Did you see any die? Did you watch all the tapes? Did you like what you saw? Did you enjoy your little investigation? How many victims of the Green River Killer were in my movies? At least one. Who? Her name's Helen Remus. Never heard of her. She's on your tapes. She's not a Green River victim. She's missing. Doesn't mean she's dead. Did you find her body? No. Of course not. I know their names backwards and forwards. There is no Helen Remus. We've got you. All right. Do you understand that? We've got you. Look around it. You're not going anywhere. You know where you're going? Jail. What do you think is going to happen in jail when those boys find out what kind of stuff I did and kill those women? If I did, I wouldn't be here. Look at Bundy. He was phenomenal. You guys still don't know how many women he killed. But in the end, 
He was stupid. He made mistakes. If I had done this, I wouldn't make mistakes. But I'm here. Therefore, I didn't do it. Once again, you've arrested an innocent man. Yeah, you're here, Everett. I think your logic's a little flawed. It's like fingerprints, only better. They're still working on it. I did some research. They haven't perfected it yet, but DNA's the coming thing. So you think we can match Holloway to some of the victims? We can only hope. When I was a kid, I used to wonder if the dead ever talked to the living. What would they say? I figured they'd try to help us, like tell us to buy this lottery ticket or not to go out with that guy. Do you think he called all of them? Um, a good many of them, yeah. Why? I don't know, sweetheart. Why would God let this happen? Well... Well, God gives people free will. They get to make choices. The guy who did this made a terrible choice. Do you think God is punishing them? <sighs> no, I don't think it works that way. It's not their fault what happened. But didn't they choose to live like that? Yeah. But that doesn't give anyone the right to hurt him. So why doesn't God help you find him? So more women don't die. You might think about becoming a lawyer, honey, because you asked some really tough questions. Hey. Hey, what's up? I, uh, just got a call from the DNA lab. Uh -huh. Everything we sent them, totally useless. Unbelievable. Are you kidding me? Tests aren't advanced enough to compare anything but blood type. So Holloway matches, but so do a hundred other suspects. And the lab had to destroy most of the samples in order to get this far. So Holloway walks. In another stunning setback for the King County Green River Task Force, King County Police have released former Marine Everett Holloway, who was arrested last month in connection with the murders of 39 women. Lack of progress has plagued the task force for several years, and protesters have decried the misuse of King County taxes on a case that has gone unsolved since 1982. It is generally believed that the Green River Killer has stopped killing, moved elsewhere, or died. In other events... I didn't believe that anyone wanted to help me. That's what I thought. But I was wrong. Excuse me, lady. Do you recognize this lady at all? No. Mm -mm. No, okay. Mm -mm. Excuse me. Do you recognize this woman? Sorry. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you have to believe, even if you're mistaken. Even if there truly is no one who gives a damn about you. Because what's the point in thinking that? To be right? Why not believe in Santa, even if it's a lie? If it makes you happy, who's it gonna hurt? So what if you look like an idiot? You gotta hope. Even if hope is a lie. The manhunt program so far has produced only one viable lead. We have decided, therefore, due to budget restraints, to reduce the task force to two full-time detectives. Detective Dave Rager and Detective Faye Brooks. 
Heading home? Angela's going out on her first date tonight. Congratulations. <laughs> she was nine when this started. How long have you been driving? Um, about six months. Any traffic violations I should know of? No, sir. What movie are you gonna go see? I thought I let Angela decide that. No R-rated films? No, sir. Coming straight home? Daddy, if you're gonna go through his entire criminal history, we're gonna be late. What? What criminal history? Come on, friend. I'll be back by 11.30. I'll bring you home right after the movie, I promise. All of us here? We still hope. Like, once I met this girl, Ted Bundy did her. And she's not like me. She was in college. She came from a nice family. She never saw it coming. But if she had seen it coming, or someone in her family had, and there was no way to stop it, wouldn't that have been worse? I mean, if the choice is between fate and hope. It's only 10.45. The movie's probably just letting out. I'm not worried. Well, hope lets you breathe a little easier. Have a good time? Yeah. Did you? Oh, well, I've been working all night. I just came up five minutes ago to have a little break. What movie did you see? Um, we didn't. We went to Lake Sammamish and we talked. You talked? Yeah. And guess what I found out? What? He's not the Green River Killer. Angel. You live in a different world than I do, Daddy. You see horrible things every day. Well, horrible things happen. But they don't have to happen. And most of the time they don't. Well, that's true, but it doesn't mean they're not going well, to happen. Well, when you were a kid, horrible things never happened to you. You were never even mugged or, or attacked. I was. Not much older than your brother. No, no, no. I got away. Help me! But who knows what he would have done if I hadn't. Ever since then, I've dedicated my life to stopping people like him. People who prey on innocent others. And they're out there, sweetheart. Nobody ever expects to meet them. And then it's too late. Thank you, Daddy, for keeping me safe. I don't believe that there is anyone who loves me or wants to help me. <laughs> Not even God. <laughs> I think God hates me. And I don't know why. <laughs> but it's never enough. You picked up the phone. You caught the case answering the phone that first time. All because some guy tried to slit your throat. 
So was that bad luck? Don't believe in luck. Okay. But in high school, you lived for three and a half months overlooking the Green River. That must have been fate. I don't believe in fate. Then what do you believe in, Dave? But I do believe in God. And you think that this was part of God's plan? You think that God would let you let us down? put me in a chokehold, but I scratched his forearm and got away. Skull yet? Not so far. No. Because he moved it. Why? The skull. He moved the skull. It turned up a couple of years ago down in Oregon, by Holloway's place. The skull seems to have had some medical procedure done. You see, he killed her here. After she was decomposed, he takes the skull, he takes some bones, he plants him south of Portland. Why? because he wants us to think he's not working here anymore. But I know better, because I know who he is. Okay, what do you, what do you mean? You, you got him because of a shunt? Nope, because of a little piece of the puzzle that I found a couple of days ago that I overlooked. So, what are you saying? You got Halloween? I got the Green River Killer, yeah. Now we just have to catch him. Excuse me, girls. Um, do you recognize this girl? No. No? Okay. Thank you. You dating? Um, no, but I need your help. You recognize her? Give it here. I always thought there could be a woman who got away. You know, one woman who managed to get away. There was, and she came and talked to you. He put me in a chokehold, but I scratched his forearm and got away. But she ID'd him, though. And so two days ago, I checked out his work records, his vehicle registrations. It turns out this guy was available for every single one of the murders, and he's had a good number of pickup trucks. Trucks didn't always match the eyewitness's description, but he had a brother who had something that did. Are you telling me it's Jeb Dallas? No, see, it's not Jeb Dallas. That's the thing. Jeb Dallas fits the profile. This guy doesn't fit the profile. So then, who is it, Dave? Come on. Let's just stop fooling with me. Tell me. It's Gary Ridgeway. You know, she does look kind of familiar. 
Is she your sister? Practically. Come on inside. It's miserable out there. Come on inside. Come on, I'm not gonna fight you. Come on. Here, here's the towel. Just wipe yourself off. Come on. And roll up that window. It's soaking over here. Thanks. Yeah, I do remember. I remember real well. Gary Ridgway? Yeah. And it was Ted Bundy that gave me the clip. When you get too much into the profile, you lose something. Girls on the strip disappeared because he didn't fit the profile. They trusted him. We trusted him. In the last 48 hours, I've tracked on everything I could find on the guy. He said he came with motor, where he worked. I couldn't believe it. It was the exact same building my dad worked when I was a kid. Coincidence? Maybe. Then I found his ex. In 1973, me and Gary hooked up. Man, he was wild. He'd take me for picnics in the woods. He loved the woods. He was a blast. Judge not, that ye be not judged. And after our son was born, he found God. He got very religious. Yeah, 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 so big deal. So big, who doesn't see prostitutes? You're picking up whores, you bastard! Then he started going out in the evenings for long periods of time. He'd come home dirty or soaking wet and never say what he'd been doing. When I divorced him, God went out the window. He didn't want another divorce. Didn't want to be thought of as a loser, which he was. Gary made his first big mistake in 82. He was arrested for solicitation. After that, he took women elsewhere. That's when he started killing. A year later, he was nearly caught. Excuse me. Hi. You the owner of the blue pickup? Yeah. Let me ask you a few questions. No, not at all. I remember him rolling down the sleeves. I remember it. At the time, I just thought it was nothing. I didn't think it was important. And then I was going through the tip sheets and came across your interview with Eleanor. But I scratched his forearm and got away. So I pulled his medical records. And Gary claims he had some kind of accident. He spilled battery acid on his arm. He got scared. Had his so-called accident after we showed up in order to cover up the scratches. We all made mistakes. We all made assumptions. The author of the letter has no connections with the Green River homicide. We were looking for a smoker, we were looking for a drinker, we were looking for a big guy, someone to look strong enough to hold the bodies down in the river while he covered them with rocks. We were looking for a loner, someone who hadn't married, who didn't have kids. We were looking for a drifter, someone who couldn't hold down a steady job. Gary was none of these. Gary held a job for 30 years. He had a perfect attendance record. He had an active social life. He remarried. He didn't match the profile at all. I'm not used to a man wanting me. <laughs> I'm not used to a woman wanting me. <laughs> and believe me, I've known a few. <laughs> he called me home the night of the broadcast. So please call me, because it's time for us to talk. Yeah, I'm looking for the home phone of a David Reichert. I think he lives in Renton. Just a moment, please. That number is 555-9083. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Gotcha. So we 
in Ghana. None of us proof. We need proof, Jay. We need evidence. We need hard evidence. I can't stop him until I can tie him to a body. What's your name again? Um, Helen. Hell, for yeah. sure. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what I've figured out. I used to think that God didn't exist or care. I mean, because if he did, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's all up to us. But the more I think about it, the more I've come to believe there really is a plan. The stuff that turns our lives around, it's almost like it's meant to be. Like me meeting Nat or Dave. Like me meeting Gary. No, I think I was mistaken. Get out of here, boy. Get out of here! Maybe it is fate after all. With a little bit of choice mixed in. Dave. What? Bad news. What's going on? We're tossing it, Dave. What? It's taking up too much space. Yeah. You're not taking this stuff. Man. Most of this crap is either circumstantial no, no, or completely no, no. relevant. No. This is what we need to tie this body to Gary Ridgeway. Gary Ridgeway. That's right. You tried that once before, remember? Hey, nothing in those freezers. They leave those rakes. Yeah, there's, there's not a chance in hell they can do anything with you. I'm not letting this go. Fine. Fine. You know what? You keep your damn evidence. But you're not going to be around to play with it. Because you're off the task force, Dave. What? Yeah. You've been promoted. Not my choice, but I guess they're short on mule-headed troublemakers. Or maybe they just want you out of here. Either way, there's the only one left. You got my job now, detective. Enjoy it. Come on, fellas. Captain, Captain. It's over, Dave. Still, with fate or without it, life moves on. The bodies they find in the late 80s and 90s are so decomposed they can't even say what killed them. So the victim list doesn't grow. And a lot of the cases just get filed and forgotten. Everyone starts slowing down, getting ready to retire. Except Dave. I did a vaginal swab on traces of semen. It's called polymerase chain reaction short tandem repeats, which in English means they can construct entire chains of DNA from a very small amount of evidence. How small? Single pubic hair, single drop of sperm, they can try. Catch is, you have to destroy the evidence in order to get results, but... A gamble. Well worth taking. that would have made a difference to me. Hi, Wallace. Hey, Hal. Beautiful day. A nicer, kinder grunt. <sighs> a father who stuck around for me. Trouble is, I can't remember what he looked like. Most of the time, I just hang around with the others, biding our time until something happens, till someone sets us free. Right. I've got something to show you. Mm-hmm. I've got the test results back. The lab was able to reconstruct the DNA found on Marsha Chapman. That's what that looks like. Okay. They were also able to use that one drop of sperm found in that single pubic hair of Opal Mills. Here's what that DNA looks like. The same. 
Exactly. Here's the DNA of one of our suspects taken from a saliva sample. Why are you telling me? Faye Brooks. That we've got him. Here's his picture. years ago we found the first body and a year and a half after that this task force was formed now <clears throat> I've asked you back here from other duties from other jobs because I want you all in on this at the end now, you're here voluntarily it's not an official task force so I decided to call it the NATF, not a task force. <laughs> now listen, we, we've made some mistakes over the years. For that, I have regret. But we've also been in, accused of indifference. For that, I have anger, because over all this time, never once have I heard any of you ever say, well, these women are just prostitutes. No, you went out there like it was your daughters and your sister's gone missing. And it's because of that kind of dedication, that kind of hard work, that we're finally bringing their killer to justice. Congratulations. Gary Ridgeway, I'm Detective Mullinex from the King County Police. under arrest for the murders of Marcia Chapman, Cynthia Hines, Opal Mills, and Carol Christensen. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up that right, everything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you do not have an attorney or cannot afford one, one will be provided for you by the court. Okay. Let's go. Do you understand your rights as they've been read to you? Gary Leon Ridgway has been arrested in connection with the murders of four of the Green River victims. The 
they've got four counts against you, Gary. Uh, Chapman, Mills, and Christensen by DNA, and Hines because she was found with the first two. I didn't do it, I swear to you. I appreciate that. Now, we can fight this on the lab work. I can get 10 experts who will testify to the disintegration and deterioration of the samples tested. They're 20 years old. But if they connect you with any other victims, we're in trouble. They won't. <laughs> they can't. Good. Then we'll beat this. Can I get off? No. You gotta nail him, Dave. You gotta nail this guy. There's no such thing as can't do. Remember? specks of paint we pulled out of the victim's clothing which is sitting downstairs doing nothing for all those years someone found a way to measure particles as small as one or two microns wait, wait, slow down. paint paint individual brands of paint can now act as fingerprints for a bag that that's the paint on the victim's clothes yeah they're charging you with three more murders they matched paint found on the victim's clothing with a specialized brand is only where you work. You lied to me, Gary. I... I don't want, want to die, please. Don't let them kill me. Nineteen years ago, I promised you I would find your granddaughter's killer. <laughs> I've come to ask you a favor. There are families out there whose daughters have never been found. I want to make a deal with Gary Ridgway. What kind of deal? Life without parole. He, he deserves to die. Yes, he does. But these families also deserve to bury their daughters. And if Gary dies without talking, they'll never get that chance. She's still missing. We don't bargain with serial killers. If there's no trial, it'll save the county million. And cost me my job. People want him dead. No, they want justice, and his death is not going to give them that. There are over 30 bodies that we found, and we can't tie them to him yet. I've talked to the families. They want their daughters found. They want their daughters properly buried. They want to put their daughters to rest. I can't agree to this. You listen to me. These women deserve more than just his execution. They deserve to be heard. They deserve a voice. And whether you like it or not, this man is the only one that can give them that voice. So you, you go ahead. You go ahead. You tell these families that their daughters don't matter, and then we'll see what happens to your job. An agreement has been reached between King County prosecutors and Gary Ridgway, granting him life without parole in exchange for full and complete disclosure regarding his crimes. The agreement which a majority of the murdered women's family support will allow detectives to meet one-on-one -on -one with Ridgway and ask questions that have stumped them for years. Relatives of 20 of the young women Ridgway killed over the past two decades will get a chance to confront him in a historic sentencing hearing in King County Superior Court.
Jerry. I'm Dave Record. Nice to see you, Dave. was different from what I really was. The prostitutes were the easiest. I went from having sex with them to just plain killing them. The sight of them for me was like candy in a dish. They were trash, they're just trash. They didn't mean nothing to me. Once I killed them, I didn't keep it in memory. Let's talk about your trucks. Do you remember your trucks? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> I had over 100 one time or another. You know, I could tell you the make, the year, how much I paid for them, what kind of gas mugs they had, what color I painted each one. <laughs> I could tell you who, who, who I bought them from. <laughs> I could tell you who I sold them to. But you don't remember the women. I'd spent hours cruising the strip. You know, patrolling. I only slept a couple hours a night. It was kind of like my um career. Who was the first? I don't remember. I thought I killed before Green River. I thought I left bodies on the streets against fences. Expecting them to be found, but they never was. Why did you put rocks in their vaginas? Because they didn't want nobody to have sex with them. It was my property. When you found them and took them away, it felt like you was taking away something of mine that I put there. Those ones in the river? I pinned them down because you already found two of them and I wasn't going to let these other ones get away. Stupid fisherman came along and wrecked hey, everything. Good morning. You found him anyway. Made me mad. So I put the trout and stuff in that one just to throw you guys off. Your expert said it was. Like the Last Supper. <laughs> Man, I really, I had everyone fooled. Even the women? Oh, yeah. Especially them. I, I never picked them up at the curb, but they was working too many witnesses. I waited for them to approach me. Hey. Hey. Could you give me a lift? Hop in. They sometimes ask me if I was the Green River Killer. Do I look like the Green River Killer, I'd say? <laughs> and then they'd laugh. I always tried to put women at ease. I'd offer them a beer, a job, a lot of money. That didn't work. I showed them a picture of my son. I even took him with me. Hey, bud. <laughs> Didn't mean to take so long. That nice lady we picked up. 
She decided to walk home. After that, when I could, I always took him to my house. sure they took care of business beforehand in case they have an accident you know <sighs> after sex if I was behind they always raised their head when they was done and that gave me a clear shot That was so good. That was so good. You're hurting me. Stop. No, 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 come on. Stop. Run away. Don't fight. No, you're hurting me. I'm only hurting you. Just relax. Relax. I'm going to let go. Just relax. Just relax. I choked him because it was more personal, more rewarding. Sometimes I miscalculated. some around every one of them even when I thought that was dead just to be careful I really didn't want to get caught it was not easy I lived with a terrible burden getting rid of all those bodies <gasps> And I didn't keep the clothes. They was rags to me. As for the jewelry, <laughs> I loved seeing it in all my friends. <laughs> But disposal was a pain. Waste of time and gas. If I could have dropped them down a bottomless mine shaft, it would have made it so much easier. Did you ever have post-mortem intercourse with any of your victims? Just with 10 or so. It was free. I didn't have to pay for it. We found over 40 bodies, Gary. How many more? And can you take us through them? I can try.
one girl. What's her name? Ellie Slater. She's the one that first led you to me. Ellie, come back here! Excuse me, sir. I hated her for that. So I put her in a place alone so she wouldn't have nobody with her. Last kill. 1985. 1991. 1998. You didn't pin her on me. That's okay. That's kind of rusty. How many? How many women did you kill? 71. I can't remember them all. Do you remember this one? <laughs> I, um... my victim. <laughs> the way she was looking at me and begging me for her life. <sighs> that that taught me a lesson. Never to choke him with my hands. Because I didn't want to I didn't want that part to be memorized in my mind. She was looking at me and begging for me to stop, but I, I couldn't do that. She would have turned me in, and I wouldn't have been able to kill no more. And that meant a lot to me, to kill. I'm not going to confess to any woman you want to pit on me, not if she's mine. I got pride in what I do. I'm not going to take it from nobody else. And it wasn't a hobby, it was my career. Why are you crying now? It's been so long since you killed those women. Why are you crying? Why are you crying now? Because of how I screwed up. How I, I screwed up killing them. Evidence? Is there something missing in you that other people have? Caring? That caring thing? We've come a long way through a lot together you think of it we both started on that river bank moved on from there every life you touched I touched too yeah. I'm a Christian man Gary I believe in forgiveness I believe to be forgiven, you have to confess. Have you confessed? You told me absolutely everything. You've told me everything. Yes. Then I'm going to tell you something, Gary. You make me. 
sick. You disgust me. Everybody's deserving of the life the Lord gives them. Everybody, but not you. Not you. Because you, you didn't just kill these women. You destroyed every life they ever touched. Every life these poor girls. Howard! You get behind these girls and you choke them. From behind you choke these 16-year-old girls. 16-year-old girls! Howard! You're a... You're a coward, Gary. You're a coward. You're evil. You're a monster. You're a broken, broken, broken thing. Broken. I am. I am. They never found me. Gary never admitted that he killed me or where he put me. I'm one of the 23 lost. On a scale, say, one to five, where five is the worst possible evil you could be, what would you be? I'd say a three. What about you? If five was the best possible person, you could be three. I'd be a three. To move someplace, you gotta let go. You gotta say goodbye to the people you love and hate and don't want to forgive. But if our lives are like a poem, that when it works, it comes spilling out like it's meant to be, we can't forget that poems are something we make. And even though we live mostly in randomness and luck, once in a while something good and deliberate happens and it's not just God. Sometimes it's us responsible too. Dave proved that to me. I mean, if there is fate, we have to be able to conquer it. We really can be the masters of our lives. Against terrible odds, we can make things happen.
Okay, Helen. Your turn. Yeah. <laughs>